the Mets come out swinging against the Giants Sunday at 4 on Channel 9. Saturday, July 17th. The feds say they've cracked another terrorist plot in our area. Also tonight, President Clinton surveys the massive flood damage in the Midwest. And the head of the FBI takes a nasty spill after a stormy meeting. From the newsroom, this is Channel 9 News Weekend with Reg Wells, Bill Vargas on sports, and George Lindsay Young's weather. Good evening, everyone. I'm Reg Wells. Tonight, the feds say they have uncovered another terrorist plot in our area. They say this time the target was Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak. So far, one suspect has been formally charged. Abdo Mohammed Hagag appeared in court today and was ordered held until a detention hearing Tuesday. He is from Egypt and now has permanent resident status in the United States. Hagag lives in the same Jersey City apartment building as Sheikh Omar Abdul Rahman. The building super told us he's had some run-ins with Hagag over the building rule. For some reason, he didn't like me. Uh, what he did he have against me, I don't know. Hagag worshipped at the same Jersey City Mosque where Sheikh Rahman frequently preached his brand of Islamic fundamentalism. When we came to take these pictures of the mosque, our photographer didn't exactly get a warm welcome. The FBI claims Hagag conspired to murder Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak during Mubarak's visit to the United States in March. When Mubarak decided not to come to New York, the plan allegedly was delayed until September, when Mubarak will be at the United Nations. Is this tie-in in any way with the World Trade Center bomb? I don't have any knowledge of that from my client. I have no knowledge of that from the government. Hagag's co-conspirators allegedly include two of the alleged leaders of the foil plot to bomb the Lincoln and Holland tunnels and to assassinate Senator Al D'Amato and State Hans Assemblyman Doug Heiken. Hagag is not charged in that plot. Meanwhile, in Egypt today, five more followers of Sheikh Rahman were hanged for alleged attacks on tourists and an attempted hit on a government official. Tonight, police are searching for a teenage suspect who allegedly set a Brooklyn building on fire. And at the same time, police are also looking for a suspect who tried to attack the firefighters who were putting out the flames. Robert Miller has more. 16-year-old Freddie Monez is being sought by fire marshals. He's believed to have started last night's multi-building fire in Williamsburg. The fire began in a littered courtyard. Eighteen families in surrounding buildings were burned out. I was about to cook dinner for my children. I almost left one of my children behind because of this fire. Mom. What about your belongings, your furniture? It's all in there. That's my very first home. Another burned out resident puts at least partial blame on the landlady of one of the buildings. There was mattresses back there, clothing, um, um, quick thing, things that would light up a fire quickly. Wood, a lot of papers, the basement, it looked like a library. For some, the charred wreckage represents the progress of their lives. Working, nurturing, caring, and then this. You're going to retire soon? <laughs> I was planning to. <laughs> well, those plans may have to go on hold. His son sees a brighter side to all this. Having my parents alive was very important for us to see. This, they could always find another place. They could always get clothes again. They could always replace all material possessions, but a life you cannot replace. He also credits the family's Jehovah Witness faith with giving them the strength to endure the situation. Meanwhile, firemen are talking about the minor pellet gun wounds suffered by two of their number and two other people after the fire was extinguished. Then there was that firebomb attack on two firemen about a week ago in Washington Heights. Are we seeing a trend? Well, we got to be a little more leery. Uh, you know, we, I've always, I've always counted on the people being our, our friend, and they've always helped us. But now, you know, now we're we're we're, uh, we're a little leery about that. But the fire department also said that many neighborhood people did their best to help the firefighters as they fought last night's blaze. Robert Miller, Channel Nine News. In other news, a transit cop is lucky to be alive tonight after somebody shot him. Fortunately, Officer Joseph Bogliol was wearing his bulletproof vest. He says he came across a man sleeping in an out-of-service train yesterday. The man jumped from the train and Bogliol chased him. I got off the train and this individual fired a shot at me. I fell to the ground and uh, took cover and fired, returned fire at him. And uh, that's when my partner dragged me out of there. 
The bullet struck his vest. He was stunned, but not seriously hurt. And it was not the first close call he's had. Two years ago, he was attacked by a man with a knife. The Reverend Al Sharpton marched in the streets of Brooklyn today. Sharpton says he is leading a block-by-block -block crusade to stamp out drug locations all over the city. We must stop the violence inside our community, as well as challenge those that are violent outside. And we intend to tour this city throughout the summer. Sharpton and the protesters came armed with paint. They marked big red X's on reputed crack houses. Another anti-drug rally was held on Manhattan's east side. Residents say drug and crime problems are growing. To make their point, the residents said they recently collected 2,000 crack vials from the streets. A bad day for William Sessions, the embattled director of the FBI. He met with Attorney General Janet Reno and top administration officials about his future. Afterward, he tripped over a curb outside the Justice Department building. He broke two bones in his elbow. Sessions was reportedly told at his meeting that if he doesn't quit, he will be fired. Reno was in New York, meanwhile, tonight to speak to the Organization of Chinese Americans National Convention. She declined to comment on her meeting with Sessions this morning. She did say that she had phoned him in the hospital to find out how he was feeling. Tonight, police in Vineland, New Jersey, are investigating a racist incident. 800 residents found white supremacist literature in their mailboxes. The flyers contained racist cartoons and urged people to join the National Alliance, a white supremacist group based in West Virginia. Coming up later tonight, President Clinton tours the flood-ravaged Midwest. We'll have team coverage. Also tonight, fighting words from Saddam Hussein and wedding bells for a famous couple. But first, the man who always rings the bell, George Lindsay Young. Indeed, Reg, a picture-perfect mid-July day, bright sunshine, 88 degrees. And what about tomorrow morning? Good news indeed. 7 a.m. wake-up weather forecast for Sunday, mostly sunny and pleasant. Temperatures at 7 in the low 70s. Coming up in just a bit, if you like today, you'll love tomorrow. Good news indeed. Details on that and a lot more in weather. Now, here's Bill. All right, George, the Yankees make a bid for first place. We'll have highlights coming up. And, of course, the Mets, frankly speaking, look great today. Frank Tanana bids for a no-hitter. No kidding. I'll have the details a little bit later. Have you seen all the press Ford's been getting? The Ford Taurus is the number one selling car in America. In fact, of the 10 best selling vehicles in America, five of them are Fords. Only a Ford dealer can make this claim. I keep telling you, Ford is winning back America. Now you can get $1,800 in savings on the Ford F-150, the number one selling truck in America for 16 straight years. Your Ford dealer is winning back America with five of the 10 best sellers. Mm -hmm. See your tri-state quality Ford dealer and see for yourself. Showboat Casino Hotel, Atlantic City. I can take care of myself in the ring, but in my car, I've got to protect a lot more than just my pretty face. Like George, 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 and George. That's why I trust my brakes to Monarchy. They're experts, so I get high quality service at a low price. Heck, with all these Georges, I can use that extra money for food. Now more than ever, at Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. Set sail with Jacques Cousteau as the adventure continues. Explore the depths of beautiful oceans, enchanting yet unbalanced. The Cousteau team uncovers the story of a paradise lost through man's misuse of the sea. On Cousteau's rediscovery of the world, the mirage of the sea. Sunday at 9 on Channel 9. Tough talk from Saddam Hussein. The Iraqi leader launched his harshest attack yet against the Clinton administration. He accused President Clinton of political insanity and racial fanaticism. Meanwhile, the president focused on a crisis here at home, the flooding in the Midwest. Charles Zewi has more. 
Leaning out Marine One, Clinton saw acre upon acre of drowned farms and homes. On his third trip to the flood-ravaged Midwest, the president promised a nice state flood summit, short-term relief and long-term recovery, vowing to be a good partner. But we don't want people to think that they have been abandoned when the um, immediate emergency is over. With the extent of damage, that could take a while. Clinton offered federal troops for relief efforts, but governors of hard-hit states want money, and much more of it than the $2.5 billion Clinton is proposing. People are fighting, uh, frankly, for their lives and their livelihoods. Federal aid, the president said, will climb as damage estimates rise. Because 8 million acres of farmland is now underwater, most of the loss will be agricultural. We've seen uh, some of our best farmland go underwater, and that means we're not going to have a crop this year, and there may not be a crop for several years. Even as the summit was underway, there was more trouble on the flood front. The last span across the Mississippi along a 200-mile stretch is closed after a levee failed, flooding approaches to the Bayview Bridge in Quincy. When the levee gave way Friday night, a gas station hit by floodwaters exploded. A barge was also sucked through the breach, sending volunteers scrambling. As we were out there, you could hear the trees crashing, and another barge came through, and then we tried to get the hell out of there. Near St. Louis, meanwhile, authorities ordered more people from their homes after an additional number of Missouri River levees collapsed, submerging a third of one county. Congressional leaders are predicting there will be no gridlock this time in getting approved what the president finally proposes in the way of a flood relief package. Charles Zewey, Channel 9 News, Arnold, Missouri. And there is no question the flood misery is mounting. Gary Rebstock reports now from Fargo, North Dakota. The Red River went five feet over flood stage in less than six hours. But the worst flooding seemed concentrated in just a few neighborhoods. Though from Doug Fliss's viewpoint, it's a disaster. We never thought the, uh, the pond back here with the golf course would get as big as it did. Uh, but it just really rained and rained and rained last night. What they've been able to salvage from the basement and the family room is in the front yard, drying in the sun. Neighbors are helping to sandbag and build a dike next door. The water was uh, up to here, into here. So we've, uh, we've pumped out quite a bit of water already. What caught them by surprise here is that the worst flooding isn't along the Red River. It's at places like the Fargo Dome, miles away, where the storm sewers simply couldn't handle any more rain. The Fargo Dome opened just six months ago. It cost $50 million. Now the AstroTurf is floating on six inches of water. The storm sewers were still bubbling like fountains 10 hours after the rain stopped in some places. Boats are the only effective way to get around in this subdivision in southeast Moorhead. And the sheriff of Clay County says it's far from over. Now we'll see the river funny in the next, uh, between now and Thursday when they predict it'll crest. That's when we'll see the actual river flooding now. So you're looking for it to get a lot worse. Right, yeah, a lot worse. In Fargo, I'm Gary Rebstock for Channel 9 News. And up later on Channel 9 News, Bill Vargas has all the latest sports action, including reaction from the New York Yankees. If you stay with us. School's out. Hey, everything is great. Let's go. Bay's in. Hello. The Richard Bay Show. You know I love you. Weekdays at 11 on Channel 9. Bill Vargas is here. The Yankees are on a roll. Yeah, I mean, it was a great day for baseball, Reg. Not too hot. Right. The only thing really hot is the Yankees' bats. 14 more hits today on top of 17 last night. And the Yanks earned themselves an A today as they take on the Oakland A's this afternoon with first place on the line. They send Jim Abbott to the mound. Hey, Abbott, where Toronto, although the Yanks are actually kind of downplaying that fact tonight. At this point, it doesn't really mean a whole lot because uh, uh, there's four teams within striking distance, and uh, uh, like it didn't mean much when we were two games back the other day. I mean, we're, you know, there's four or five teams right here knocking on the door, and within a week's time, if you could go from fifth to first or fourth to first. Well, Jim, a lot's been made about the fact that this team doesn't usually support you. Only 229 average in games that you pitched, but uh, that wasn't the case today. No, they, they really played great ball today. Scored some runs. Uh, like I said, we, I was facing, you know, going up against Bobby Witt today, I didn't know, you know, what to expect. He's been throwing the ball real well, and, and uh, we got to him, and, uh, you know, it seemed like everybody contributed a little bit. Especially satisfying to get a win against the A's. They're a team that always seems to give you a hard time. Yeah, it is. It's, it's especially satisfying, but at this point... Um, nine out of the last ten at home and got, what, 15 out of the next 18 at home. So it looks real good from that perspective. Yeah, you always want to win at home. Uh, we have a team built and designed for the stadium. 
and uh, hopefully we can continue to win on, at home and on the road. Deion James, in fact, had three hits today, as did Mattingly, and here's why the win leaves him in a tie for first place. Toronto hosting Kansas City this afternoon, and KC's Toronto drops back into a tie with the Yankees. But Baltimore tonight, with a chance to leap more, remains a half game back, but New York, New York is at the top of the heap. Or tied for first, anyway. <laughs> the Mets, meanwhile, in Frisco. And you figure it is a mismatch. The last place Mets sending 40-year-old Frank Tanana against the Giants, who have baseball's best record, and John Burkett, who just played in the All-Star game. But it's Tanana who comes out today looking like the All-Star as we win Mets win. To golf now as the British Open will enter tomorrow's final round, very much up for grabs as today's third round action sees Greg Norman, the Shark, on the par 3 11th, gets down in two for the bird with this beautiful putt, moves into a tie for the lead temporarily. But then on 16, it is Corey Pavin charging in front. Look at him sink the birdie to go eight under, one stroke up on Norman. And Nick Faldo, the hometown hero in Britain, comes into the round as the leader with a chance to recapture the lead on 18, but as you see, way off. And now needs the putt for par to stay tied with Pavin, which he does, and they'll be tied entering the final round tomorrow. Closer to home, the LPGA Big Apple Classic in New Rochelle, New York, has Betsy King leading at minus five going into the final round. King is the queen of women's golf. Run that past me again. Betsy King is leading going into the final round of the Big Apple Classic. She's going to take a bite out of the Big Apple Classic. Final round tomorrow. Okay, just like New York, New York, so nice you had to say it twice. <laughs> exactly. that, okay. Coming up later, George tells us how long the nice weather will last, and we'll see what's not up in space in the shuttle. Stay with us. Now's the best time to order cable TV because of what you save. Hey, it's what you see. You can't afford to miss this great deal. As you own it. Spectacular eight-way hand-tied coils. Third seating, the lowest prices and best guarantee. That's value. The launch of the space shuttle Discovery was canceled today. Disappointed astronauts climbed out of the shuttle less than an hour before scheduled blast off. A bad electrical circuit was discovered in the launch pad. George Lindsay Young, what kind of weather do you have in the lily pad? Well, I have uh, some very good-looking weather for the next week ahead. Excellent. A few showers and thunder showers Monday and Tuesday, but the triple-digit weather, goodbye for now. Speaking of weather, let's take a look at what's happening outside. Clear, actually mostly clear. Temperature, not bad at all. Call it a feel-good night at 77 degrees. Humidity, 35%. Winds are kicking up just a bit. It is breezy. North northwesterly winds at 12. Barabba right now, 3001, and it is on the rise. Hey, check out tonight's Dare to Say No to Drugs poster from the Channel 9 Weather Lab, saluting children who band together to say no. Woodland School, Monroe Township, Dare, it adds up. Keep up the good work, guys. All right, a good-looking day for tomorrow. A stellar Sunday ahead. High pressure building in for today brought tons of sunshine during the afternoon. This high will slowly drift off towards the east, anchor itself just to our immediate east during the late day tomorrow. High pressure in charge. That means more sunshine for the afternoon hours. Meanwhile, this warm front slowly moving in from the west, increasing cloudiness and humidity during the day to tomorrow and by tomorrow night. But overall, tomorrow is in fine shape. Unfortunately, that's not the situation in the Midwest. More flooding continuing in the Ring of Fire. High pressure right in this area bringing more moisture and instability into portions of Kansas, Iowa. Flooding continues up and down the Mississippi River. Severe thunderstorm watch continues in effect for portions of Kansas and Iowa. A few sections of Iowa today, two inches of additional rainfall. Rain they didn't need during the day. Meanwhile, strong winds kicking up in Kentucky. 70 mile an hour winds, Owensboro, Kentucky. And in the northeast, bright sunshine, beautiful conditions. Even our friends up in Burlington, 75 degrees in the sun. Can you believe it? Triple trouble in the west, 108 Lake Havasu City, 23 in Truckee. Coming to you now from the Weather Lab. Here it is for tonight. Clear, comfortable, and breezy. How can you beat it? Low to mid-60s for tonight. Sunday's weather scene, a stellar day, almost a carbon copy. Mostly sunny, increasing humidity, late day, middle 80s. And tomorrow night, some clouds beginning to roll in, but no trouble. Middle, tougher 60s.
Here's your five-day forecast now. Tomorrow, beautiful Monday. A few clouds rolling in. The possibility of showers during the afternoon. Middle 80s, more heat and humidity for Tuesday, near 90. And then Wednesday and Thursday, no problem. Mid-80s, morning lows, middle 60s range. And I'm sure nobody is going to be upset that the triple trouble, triple digits here are going to go away. You get an A for these days. Yeah. Very good. Coming up next, reports of wedding bells for JFK Jr. We'll have that story when we come back. We'll leave you tonight. Another famous couple appears ready to get hitched. John Kennedy Jr., the ex-Manhattan prosecutor, and actress Daryl Hannah. Star Magazine says the two have obtained a marriage license in Los Angeles and have 90 days now to tie the knot. Kennedy was once voted the sexiest man alive by People Magazine. That, of course, was before Lloyd Lindsay Young moved into this area. <laughs> that is our report for tonight. I'm Reg Wells. See you back here tomorrow night at 10. Good night.